Hello everyone, how are you doing my dear students? I hope you all are keeping great. So today in this video, you will be able to better remember all the examples of animal kingdom. So this video is about all examples of animal kingdom where I have given under each phylum or classes the examples of the respective classes or phyla along with their images. So that is how you are able to better remember all the examples under animal kingdom. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So the very first phylum that comes is Porifera that is sponges. So you can see the image of Sycan that is Kaifa. So which would be having uh, something like you know cylindrical structure. So the most of the images that we get to see in the textbook, I mean uh, in the different textbook or maybe even in your NCRT. So you have this image of Sycan, right? And then the next image is of Euspongia that is actually called as Bath Sponge. So it's Bath Sponge. So as the name say, they are being used for the bathing purpose. Uh, recently when I had gone for uh, you know some of my, one of my relatives home for Diwali they had kept bath sponge in their bathroom yeah so usually the dead one like it's, it's being used as a you know for the bathing purpose so that is euspongia right so Saikan Skyfa is done euspongia now coming to spongilla now spongilla as you can see the image so you can see some greenish color, right? So they are basically fresh water sponge. So most of the sponges are marine, except a few like spongilla, which is a fresh water sponge. So all you have to remember three examples under porifera phylum sponges, that is Sycan, spongilla and euspongia. So let's go to the next phylum that is Nideria, also called as Cylindrates. So under this we have quite a lot of examples. So <coughs> the image that you get to see over here is, you know, it is jellyfish. But scientific name is important to remember, that is Aurelia, right? And the, uh, you know, a very uh, fragile or very thin filamentous structure you get to see over here. So this is of Obelia. So in the different textbooks, they give the enlarged image of a small part of the filament uh, like structure uh, that is of Obelia. But in general, as a whole, as an organism, if you consider, they look like this in the un underwater. And then we have the image of sea animal whose scientific name is Adamshia. So why the name sea animal? Animon means sea animal. Animon means flower. So they actually look like a sunflower, right? That is why the name sea animal, scientific name is Adamshia. So remember when you are writing scientific name, it's better to give an underline, uh, have an underline, but sometimes I might be missing some of the underlining. It's okay. So next image we have is of Physalia. Common name is Portuguese man of war. So why the name Portuguese man of war? Because it seems uh, during the war in Portugal, the warship look like this. So if you would have seen the image of uh, sailors and all they, uh, sa I mean sailing boat, they have some cloth covered like this. So in the different movies, if you see, <coughs> So that is why the name Portuguese man of war, scientific name is Physalia. Basically the structure that you get to see, uh, they uh, are actually pneumatophores and uh, they have tentacles. <coughs> so next we have uh, the next example, as you can see here, so this is the image of sea pen. So the scientific name is Penatula. So let me tell you how you can remember that penatula is sea pen and sea pen is penatula by the image. Look at the image. They look, look like the pen. So in very much olden days, if you see, it seems they used uh, feathers, right, to write. So they look like a feathered pen. So 
um, feather they used to dip inside the ink and they used to write. So they look very similar to that. That is why the name C pen. Scientific name is penatula. So C pen, pen, penatula. That's how you can remember. P E N C pen, penatula. Next. <coughs> Uh, you can, if you just look at the image, how does it look like? Isn't it looking like brain? Yes, they are called as brain coral. Scientific name is meandrina. Brain coral is a common name because of its look. And you know that all the corals belong to cylindrates, right? So, meandrina. So, you know, medulla which is the part of medulla oblongata, which is a part of brain. So you can remember medulla meandrina, that is brain, brain coral. And the next image we have, how is it looking? Isn't it looking like a fan, the Chinese Hava Hawaii fan, if, like if you remember the song, Hava Hawaii, so she used that fan sort of a thing, right? So this is sea fan, scientific name is Gorgonia. <coughs> so, uh, like we say, no, oh, you're looking gorgeous, right? So, like we do, like we look like, you look gorgeous. Oh, like, you know, we put fan sort of a thing while we say that sometimes. So, gorgeous, gorgonia. So, with a, with a fan, you look gorgeous. So, gorgonia, that is sea fan. So, this is all the examples of Nideria. And next we have Tinophora, which comes after Nideria, also called as sea walnuts, comb jellies, we can call them as. There are just two examples you have to remember. Pleurobranchia and Tinoplena. Pleurobranchia, Tinoplena. So, Tinophora, Tinoplena. So, Tinoplena be belongs to Tinophora, so it's easy to remember. So after all, I'm making you to remember all this for your, uh, you know, neat exam. So when you see Tinoplana, you are able to easily make out it belongs to Tinophora. All you have to remember under this is Pleurobranchia. So there are no much difference between these, uh, uh, you know, two organisms because both of them have got comb. That is why the name comb jealous. Pleurobranchia is little more spherical compared to Tinoplana. They are plain, like they are little elongated. <coughs> Next is platyhelminthus, <coughs> flatworms. So you can make out by looking at the image itself that it is planaria. <coughs> so this is an easy example to remember. Apart from that, we have other two. One is liver fluke. This is the image of liver fluke scientific name is fasciola okay so fluke liver fluke fasciola ff is common so that's how you can remember so why the name liver fluke because how i used to remember is they look like liver kind of like a liver and also they will be affecting the liver of the organism and then we have tape looking like tapeworm so that is tinea. So tinea, solium, there are many other species as well. So tinea, they have given as a genus, as an example. So T, tapeworm, T, tinea. So you can easily remember this example as well. Why the name tapeworm? Because they look like tape, measuring tape. They are so elongated. And next we have Ascalminthus. <coughs> so, there are just three examples that you have to remember. One is hookworm, scientific name is Ancyclostoma. And we have Ascaris. Ascaris lumbricoids is one of the species. Ascaris is also called as roundworm. So, roundworm. They, they have a round, round structure. That is why roundworm, hookworm. <coughs> the hooks are sharp, right? Hooks are quite sharp. So they too have this image like a hook. Sharp tip they have. 
right and we have filarial worm that is vicharia that is filarial worm which causes filariasis so all you have to know is three example ascaris vicharia and cyclostoma next we have annelida where we have neris <coughs> the marine one and we have earthworm whose scientific name is ferritima and then we have leech whose scientific name is hirudinaria <clears throat> so how to remember all the scientific names easily that is by using these names frequently so if you see some structure like when you are talking to your friends in in college in school better to use scientific names while referring to that is how you can remember them better <coughs> next we have arthropoda so under this we have lot of examples to remember honey bees that is apis apis mellifera apis indica there are so many species honey bees is apis and we have silkworm that is bombyx <coughs> and we have lac insect lacifer is a scientific name it's a lac insect <coughs> which produces a uh, resins and a uh, bombyx is silkworm and we have more examples so these are the economic importance organisms in arthropoda we have some of the vectors like edis anopheles culex all the mosquitoes so you know anopheles co uh, causes malaria uh, and uh, edis <coughs> uh, culex not cause exactly anopheles will be spreading it will be spreading malaria and uh, even chikungunya uh, what is that dengue and uh, all of this are spread by even uh, the filariasis all of this are spread by these mosquitoes next we have a uh, what we call the uh, e we have locust as an example locusta is a scientific name they are gregarious eater they are a pest they come under pest example <coughs> and we have limulus <coughs> limulus which is a living fossil what is the meaning of living fossil uh, it means there is one organism one species that is living but other related species uh, are extinct that is why they are called as living fossil limulus is example <coughs> king crab is a common name next is mollusca under mollusca we have apple snail scientific name is pila why the name apple snail because of their appearance because of the shell which is very similar to apple and we have pink tada that is pearl oyster right so pink tada is a pearl oyster <coughs> pearl p pearl p pink tada that's how you can remember and we have sepia Uh, that is cuttlefish we have loligo that is squid remember squid and uh, loligo and sepia are different right even though their appearance is quite same and we have octopus we have aplysia aplysia here it's written let me write down again aplysia is a sea hare and we have octopus octopus common name is you know jellyfish sorry devil fish octopus common name is devil fish because their appearance is like devil that is why the name devil fish <clears throat> so these are four example and we have more dentalium is a tusk fish you know tusk tusk shell sorry tusk you know elephant tusk yeah they have this type of elephant tusk like shell that is why the name tusk shell that is a common name tusk shell scientific name is dentalium dentalium and we have chitin whose scientific name is ketopleura ketopleura okay keto chitin ketopleura so kiki is a uh, common pronunciation 
and tusk shell you know so these are examples under mollusca next we have echinodermata so let's get started with the easiest one that is asterias 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 means what star yes it's a scientific name of starfish and then we will go to the next easier one that is echinus <coughs> echinus so echinus meaning is spiny so if you look this organism they are very much spiny right so that is why the name echinus and the common name is sea urchin <coughs> and we have cucumber looking like organism that is cucumeria scientific name is cucumeria cucumber see cucumber is a common name and we have sea lily whose scientific name is antidon isn't it looking like an antenna that is how you can remember many antenna they look like that is why you can remember that is how you can remember antidon and it is sea lily have you seen lily uh, plant they too have very similar structure no <coughs> it's a it belongs to grass family and they look like grass very similar to sea lily that is why the name this organism name is sea lily remember they are animal not plant and we have ophiura it's a star looking like organism so it is called as brittle star okay it's brittle star okay so we are done with echinodermata examples and then we have hemichordata just two phacoglosses balanoglosses the image that you have in your textbook is of bal balanoglosses phacoglosses balanoglosses and then comes is chordata under which we have urochordata cephalochordata vertebrata so under urochordata we have three examples Acidia salpa doliolum. Acidia salpa doliolum. Okay, so remember it like together. Acidia salpa doliolum. And then cephalochordata, we just have one that is lancelet, also called as amphioxus. Okay, I hope you know the difference between urochordata and cephalochordata. Uro, that is just in the tail region, there is not a cord. So, first it is uh, it's most primitive compared to cephalochordata. It is more primitive. So first, urochordata, then cephalochordata. So urochordata, Acidia salpa, doliolum, and we have amphioxus that is under cephalochordata. <coughs> cephalochordata is nothing but notochord is present from the cephalo, that is from the head itself. Notochord is present till the tail, present throughout the life stage of the organism. Then we have vertebrata under which we have <coughs> agnatha and gnathostomata. So gna agnatha is more primitive compared to gnathostomata. Agnatha means no gnatha, that, that is no jaws. So we have one class, just one class to remember, that is cyclostomata. <coughs> As the name say, the cyclostomata means what? Stomata means what? Opening, mouth. Mouth is cycle, that is mouth is round. You just have have to have a look of this image and then you can easily make out, yeah, this is having a cyclical mouth. Lamprey is a common name, petromyzel and hagfish, that is myxin, are the two examples. Petromyzel, myxin, under cyclostomata. Next, we have vertebrata under which the very first class is chondrichthys. So, chondrichthys and osteichthys are pisces. That is their fish. So Pisces is a super class. Under which we have a class, Chondrichthys. Chondri means what? Cartilage. They are cartilage fish. So starting with Scoliodon. That is dogfish. And we have shark. So the scientific name of this shark is Carcarodon. That is great white shark. White shark is different. Dogfish is different. We have dogfish. We will be having dogfish in aquarium. In aquarium also we get to see this. 
so usually it is getting it has been confused with the great white shark so this is aquarium one scoliodon <coughs> and this is carcharodon which is a great white shark and this is dogfish this is dogfish this is great white shark and we have sawfish why the name sawfish because of chainsaw to cut the wooden and all we use chainsaw so their uh, uh, snout is like a chainsaw that is why the name sawfish scientific name is pristis scientific name is pristis and we have the image of yeah it is trigon host scientific uh, host scientific name is trigon common name is it is a stingray so a uh, lot of people uh, have died cause of this because of the sting it pro it has some toxic material in them so that is why the name it is called as stingray <clears throat> and a uh, very similar uh, you know organism we have under this very similar to look in a look wise but appearance is quite different but to look it is having the same shape that is torpedo do we have a image for that no so torpedo is nothing but electric ray so torpedo trigon scoliodon pristis carcharodon and then we have the okay then we have ostichthys ostichthys that is bony fishes under which we have a flying fish whose scientific name is exocetus and we have hippocampus that is sea horse and we have labio rohita whose common name is rohu okay so exocetus is uh, it's a flying fish so it's an exception right usually fish can't fly but this fish have very similar uh you know very similar structure the wings are uh, sorry the fins are having like a wing like structure so you can remember it's an exceptional fish that is by exocetus exceptional exo and hippocampus <coughs> hippo means actually horse so hippocampus is a horse fish sea horse sorry sea horse and we have labio labio rohu is like very easy to remember uh and yeah remember these are marine bony fish under ostichthys we have both uh, marine as well as the freshwater fish so these two are actually uh, uh, they are marine bony fish and we have a freshwater bony fish that is labio rohu labio rohita and cartla cartla scientific name is like this common name is also like this only it's cartla only pronounced as but just the spelling is different and clarius is magur so labio cartla magur are fresh water fish so here we are done with <clears throat> few examples and we have aquarium fishes which are bony one is you can make out it's a fighter fish very commonly found in aquarium present in aquarium the scientific name is betta and uh, terophyllum whose common name is ang angel fish so this also is commonly found in aquarium that is why they are kept under aquarium fishes beta terophyllum beta terophyllum and let's go to amphibians we have salamandra and we have hyla and we have rana tigrina and we have istiophis we have istiophis and we have bufo bufo is a toad bufo is a toad you can make out by looking at the image of a very big fish uh, sorry big uh, frog that is why they are called as toad so big bufo right b big b bufo that's how you can remember big frog bufo that is toad is a common name salamandra 
salamander is a common name easy to remember then we have hyla so hyla is a tree frog it is found in tree how i used to remember hyla exam uh, hyla scientific name how i used to remember was when we jump is a high right like when we are uh, jumping uh, it will be from high place we will be jumping to the lower place like if if i have to ask you if i am if i ask you to jump it will be usually uh, the situation will be like from upper to lower place so similarly they too are able to jump from a uh, one tree to another from high to low that sort of that's how i used to remember so high la okay <clears throat> then we have istiophis uh, and rana tigrina why the name rana tigrina because they have tiger like uh, you know pattern on them that is why the name rana tigrina so amphibians are done now coming to reptiles under reptiles we have turtle kilon testudo kilon is turtle testudo is tortoise chameleon you know it's a tree lizard chameleon chameleon to like we know very well calotus calotus is a garden lizard crocodilus crocodile hemidactylus is a wall lizard which we have at home <coughs> kilon turtle testudo tortoise chameleon when i say chameleon you can remember sometimes we also say to some people you are a chameleon right calot calotus is a garden lizard crocodilus crocodile now uh, there are some of the poisonous snakes that has been uh, placed in reptiles naga naga i used to remember naga is cobra right nag so naga vipera viper bangaras is great so we have image of viper and bangaras this is the image of bangaras <coughs> so how i used to remember is uh, in some languages of india uh, common language like we say bangara for gold so they have that you know gold shine that is why like that is how i used to remember bangaras great and vipera viper like yeah it's easy to remember so here it, the uh, the difficult terminology would be kilon testudo calotus hemidactylus the rest all you can relate and remember fine and we have the next is aves that is birds corvus the pronunciation itself is said i am a crow columba it's a pigeon cetacula parrot trutio pronunciation is trutio ostrich like o usually if you see any of the scientific name it, it won't be ending with o but here it is ending with o it's little different and uh, the o itself says like o lasting with the o no that's how you can remember ostrich o o ostrich pau peacock p p peacock common aptenodite aptenodites aptenodites is penguin neophronus <coughs> vulture so under birds the scientific names are like little tricky to remember see my dear students i won't be telling any mnemonics because then you have to remember the mnemonics to remember these scientific names so there is no point so my suggestion for all of you is just list all the uh, you know like as i have done list all the scientific names actually you can use this video itself in a piece of paper you can list all the scientific names under respective phylum class and re keep reading it every day put paste on your table or on the wall so corvus columba cetacula Trutio pavo, aptenodites, neophron. So these are under apes, and then we have a last class that is mammalia, starting with oviparous, that is egg-laying. Platypus is a common name. So the scientific name is ornitho ornithorhynchus. Ornitho means bird. Ornithology study of birds. So since they have a bird-like beak, they are actually called as duck-billed platypus. so duck build they have a bill like a beak like a duck so ornithorhynchus bird ornithorhynchus again rhynchus is actually beak so scientific name itself is speaking that uh, about the feature of the platypus so it's platypus and then we have viviparous <coughs> macropus kangaroo tyropus flying fox camelus macaca macaca mm monkey you can make out ratus you know 
Canis and Phyllis, even in the other chapters, you would have heard. So, Macropus, Steropus, Camillus. Macropus, Steropus, Camillus. Best all are easy to remember. And we have Elephus, elephant you can make out. Equus. We have a horse tail, horse scientific name, horse tail and a plant kingdom, right? So, we have a scientific name of that as well, like very similar to uh, this scientific name. Horse tail in the plant kingdom is very similar to the horse scientific name, Equus. Equisitum is the scientific name of, of horse tail. This is Equus. And dolphin is Delphinus. This is quite tricky to remember. Blue whale, but BB is the common. Balanoptera, blue whale. Panthera tigris, panthera leo. Even in the other chapters, you would have heard about it. So, tigris leo itself speaks that it is tiger and lion. So, these all, these all which I have discussed as of now are examples under animal kingdom. So, write down all of this in the piece of paper, paste it to your wall or on the table. So, that's all for today. Let's meet in the coming video. Until then, bye.